what are you going to have? Uh, I think I would get um, dumplings. Hi, sorry, I'm late. <laughs> Hot and sour, sour soup. soup. That's what okay. I was going to have. Okay. Nice bowl of soup on a cold day. There you go. Nice bowl of soup on a cold day. Like, they are just so pandering. It just... Couldn't you have just pictured Pelosi? They were obviously at a Chinese restaurant, just turning to the waiter and being like, number four, number four Diet Coke. That's your fried rice. That's not racist, people. It's a joke. People have been doing that joke. for It's an old joke. If you think it's racist and you're upset, be upset with some comedian in 1986. Don't be upset with me. You should be upset with the pandering from the Democrats. I'm Dave Rubin. This is The Rubin Report. It's December 21st, 2022. We're live streaming on Rumble, YouTube, and Blaze TV. Subscribe if you haven't. And today, people, as we roll in to the end of the year, man, our politicians are going out in a blaze of BS. The swamp is swamping. Just absolute insanity is happening in America right now. We're actually going to put aside some of the Twitter stuff and the free speech stuff uh, today because uh, Vladimir Zelensky uh, from Ukraine, he is here. He is in America today. Apparently, this is his first, uh, his first international trip since this war, not war, started. And uh, he's giving a speech to both sessions of the House tonight. Uh, and uh, a little something in my eyes here. Uh, I'm, I'm crying because the number four. Um, he's, uh, he's talking to Congress tonight. And he's going to be asking for a whole bunch more cash. And he's getting a whole bunch more cash. Uh, because as you may have heard, this absolutely, completely insane 4,000 page omnibus bill, which was given to all of our politicians basically yesterday, will be voted on today. Uh, and nobody read it. Nobody read it. Rand Paul carded it out. Show, he printed the whole thing. That's an awful lot of paper. And you know, printer ink, as you guys know in this office, printer ink is extremely expensive. People don't know this. Printer ink, I think, is costs more than gas and oil, like per liter or whatever it is, however they measure printer ink. That's how expensive printer ink is. So Rand Paul spent a lot on printer ink. These people are just spending our money like drunken sailors. They are printing money. This is both sides of the aisle, okay? It's, it's all the Democrats, but it's most of the Republicans too. Uh, there are a couple who are standing up against it. Obviously, Rand Paul is the main one, but Ted Cruz is. To some degree, Kevin McCarthy is in the House. We'll get into all of that. Uh, but really what the focus of the show is as we wrap up the year here today is that there is a lot of work to be done. Because even though, as I try to always spin things positively, we have these pockets of sanity and freedom and fiscal responsibility and all of those things, obviously Florida, I would say, is central to that. Uh, at the federal level, everything is broken. And you don't have to be a Republican, but you can't be a Democrat, sure, but the Republicans will fail you all the time too. And today is gonna be an exploration of that because what these clowns are, are doing with our money as we have no money, and they're giving more money to the NIH and more money to the FBI and more money to Ukraine and everything else. It's like, man, have you guys learned nothing? And I guess they did learn nothing because we don't vote them out. So that's what we're doing today. How are you? Okay, here we go. So Zelensky uh, from Ukraine. Now he was a former comedian and uh, television host, became uh, the president of Ukraine. Uh, he's a big star now. If we've learned anything in this last year, the man is a big star. So we thought we'd start before we get to the nitty gritty and the nuts and bolts of the money and the scale of the war and all that stuff. We thought we'd go through some of the, the stardom that this guy has attained over the last year or so. Here he is, you may remember this one, when he met Ben Stiller in Ukraine earlier this year. And uh, you would imagine as a guy going through this horrific war and people are being killed and fleeing the country and bombs are dropping everywhere, that you might not have time to meet Zoolander, but this guy worked it out. Hello, Hello nice sir. Really nice to meet you. Hello, Hello. thanks for taking the time. Wait, it's a great yeah. honor for me. No, we, no. Uh, we <laughs> know you, you very well. Um, it's yes. a great honor for me and nice to see you. Um, it's really wonderful. You're my hero. You're no, amazing. No, yes. No. No. As as uh, you, you quit a great acting career for this. Not so great as you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for 
pretty great. Um, Thank you so much. But what you've done and the way that you've uh, rallied the country and what, you know, for the world, it's really inspiring. So the level of destruction, I mean, you see it on television, exactly what you're saying. You see it on TV, you see it on social media, and you, you know, it's something else to actually see it and feel it. It's so perfect. Ben Stiller, you're my hero. There is zero chance that Ben Stiller knew who Zelensky was last year. Again, they are in the midst of this, what we're told is this really horrific war and the country is collapsing, but they have time to sit down and chat with a comedian and, you know, what's going on? How you doing? You're a great actor. I'm a great actor. Let's go through the shtick. It's just such silliness. And by the way, if, if he had anything of value to say, if there was any reason, like true reason to help Ukraine that Ben Stiller was there, they wouldn't be doing it in front of cameras. They would be having private meetings. But the idea that they have to make the show of everything, that seems to me to, me, to be where we're at with almost everything at this point. The show must go on. It's not really what's happening in the world, what level of destruction there is, what's really going on in Ukraine. It's that the show must go on. Speaking of the show, uh, Zelensky also managed to go on David Letterman a couple months ago, uh, and a, a bomb apparently was flying by the, uh, the area where they were filming, so they had to stop for a second because of the sirens, and Zelensky explained that to Dave. What was the siren indicating? На жаль, я повинен констатувати, що це означає сьогодні звичку, і багато українців звикли до цього. Я чому кажу на жаль, тому що я вважаю, що війна не має бути звичкою. Іноді дуже сильно звикаємо до сирен і навіть не звертаємо уваги. Yeah, they're so accustomed to them that David didn't have to get out of his chair. Don't worry about that. They're also in a in a train station there that they've lit beautifully. Looks like a Hollywood set. They're ignoring bomb sirens like is anyone paying attention to any of this? But the show must go on, as I said, and here you see during the Grammys, uh, Zelensky appeared and he spoke to the good people of Hollywood. Our musicians wear body armor instead of tuxedo. They sing to the wounded in hospitals, even to those who can't hear them, but the music will break through anyway. We defend our freedom to live, to love, to sound. On our land, we are fighting Russia, which brings horrible silence with its bombs, the dead silence. Feel the silence with your music. Feel it today to tell our story. Did I hear that correctly? Did he just say that musicians in body armor sing to deaf people in their hospitals and somehow the music gets through? He is an actor. Okay, uh, here's a little more from the Grammys. John Legend and a Ukrainian refugee, which was the title of my first band when I was <laughs> years ago in Brooklyn. It was called John Legend and the Ukrainian Refugees, um, singing about Ukraine at the Grammys. Rain down freedom, rain down to we're all free. my husband, my parents, my child, and my motherland. It's a show, guys. It's a show. By the way, I just, you know, I know I'm being a little tongue-in-cheek with some of this stuff. I'm, I'm not denying that Russia is bombing the hell out of Ukraine, and this has, has demolished the lives of hundreds of thousands of people. As a matter of fact, locals had an office in Ukraine that we don't have anymore, and several of our employees, uh, we were able to help get them out. I can't explain exactly how we did it for obvious reasons, uh, but some of them are now in the United States. And actually, we're at our, uh, our holiday party at my house a couple of days ago. So uh, I, this is not to say that I have no sympathy for the people of Ukraine, but something else is going on here at this level, right? They're, the people are all at this level, but the machine and the way it operates and the fakery and the show and all of that, that's up here. And that's what I'm poking fun at right now. Uh, here is Zelensky and his wife posing for a Vogue photo shoot. Again, one of these things you would imagine at the height of a war, you have a lot to do. Like, guys, could we move the soldiers this way? Do we have enough bullets? Uh, but... You know, Vogue photo shoot. (music) 
you may have recognized famous portrait photographer Annie Leibovitz there. She's the one that took care of that. And again, it's just like, if you were real, like try to imagine, say, I don't know, Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill. The Nazis are on the way, guys. The Nazis are coming. Excuse me, I'm trying to take a picture for Vogue, okay? How was that for a Churchill impersonation? That was, I'm trying to take a picture for Vogue, just a second. Ridiculous. Anyway, the meme makers of the internet had a little fun with that, so take a look. God, that woman scares me. Anyway, uh, Zelensky also became Time Magazine's Person of the Year. Look at him like a Star Wars character. Everything is, this is what they do with everything now, right? It's one big face and then small faces around it, just like he is from Revenge of the Sith. Oh, lordy, lordy. Okay, so why am I telling you all of this? Because I want to show you first the show portion of all of this. This man is under no threat. He is obviously not worried. He is not starving. He is meeting celebrities. He's talking to the Grammys. He is in it with Hollywood. He's getting a shit ton, I, that's a technical term, of cash. His wife, can, can you confirm the number on this for me? I'm fairly certain went to Paris last week and spent $40,000 on jewelry and bags. Can we just, we'll get the confirmation on that thing. Uh, but yes, uh, Zelensky is, uh, is meeting with everybody. You may remember this. Uh, now remember, we're in the middle of a war in Ukraine. For some reason, all of our politicians can just show up there. Nobody's wearing helmets. Nobody's worried they're going to get bombed. Here's Mitch McConnell in his tan pants just showing up and saying hi to Zelensky. Thank you. You're very good to see you, sir. Thank you. We know each other. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> good to see you again. Yeah, yeah, please. And we invite our delegation also to join. As you can see, guys, the threat of war, because you know Mitch McConnell, if there was a war and people, you know, he sends a lot of people to war and he likes putting a lot of money into war, uh, but he often doesn't go to the war zones, right? So you could see he was really freaked out, you know, with the, the slacks and the, and the pictures and the whole thing. Uh, yeah, okay, zippity dippity. Uh, anyway, uh, Zelensky is slated to speak to Congress tonight. Uh, we have a video previewing some of that. Vladimir Zelensky is going to leave Ukraine for the first time since the war started and come to speak to a joint meeting of Congress in the House chamber tomorrow night. You might remember that Zelensky spoke to a joint meeting of Congress virtually in mid-March of this year. This is the first time that he has left Ukraine. He left Ukraine uh, to go to Munich just for a few days before the war started. Now, there was a cryptic message that was sent by House Speaker Nancy Pelosi just about an hour ago to her members. Uh, she wants members to come back to Washington to vote for the omnibus spending bill. And I thought that this message was a little bit strange because they have remote voting in the House of Representatives and not everybody would need to be here in person to cast their ballots. And it says, this is the message from Pelosi, we are ending a very special session of the 117th Congress with legislation that makes progress for the American people as well as support for democracy. Please be present for a very special focus Wednesday night. Okay, so there's something interesting that he's saying there at the end. We're, we're going to get to the spending bill in just a second and, and wait till, I mean, some of this stuff is just absolutely insane. You have to understand, these people vote electronically usually. They vote remotely. Barely anyone shows up in D.C. When we were in D.C. a couple weeks ago, it's a freaking ghost town. It's, it's disturbing what it's like over there. Uh, and we were there right after the election when actually there were a few people there, but there's just no regular people. There's government people, a couple government people, but the stores are empty, the, the, the restaurants are empty, et cetera, et cetera. She wants everybody to come back because somehow her master, Zelensky, I, I, don't, know, I don't know who the master is, who's pulling the strings, but somehow you got to come back to listen to Zelensky, the guy we're giving a ton of money to. We have no money. We have printed a lot of money and destroyed our economy here in the United States, but we got to keep giving money to Ukraine. And we'll get some of those numbers for you in just a second. Here's a bit more from the Daily Item. Congressional leaders unveiled a government-wide $1.7 trillion 
spending package early Tuesday that includes another large round of aid to Ukraine, a nearly 10% boost in defense spending, and roughly $40 billion in emergency spending, mostly to assist communities across the country recovering from drought, hurricanes, and other natural disasters. The bill, which runs for 4,155 pages, includes about $772.5 billion for non-defense discretionary programs and $858 billion for defense and would last through the end of the fiscal year at the end of September. Lawmakers worked to stuff as many priorities as they could into the sprawling package, likely the last major bill of the current Congress. They are racing to complete a passage before a midnight Friday deadline or face the prospect of a partial government shutdown going into the Christmas holiday. Lawmakers leading the negotiations released the details of the bill shortly before 2 a.m. on Tuesday. So let's just be real clear about how the government operates. And by the way, guys, the government has always operated this way, but with the cacophony of insanity that we are all up against with these people and all of the things we're finding out through Twitter leaks and all of the censorship we have dealt with and everything else, the idea that at 2 a.m. on Tuesday, they're releasing a 4,000 page bill and everyone's gonna vote on it the next day. It's absolutely insane. I would bet my life, literally my life, that zero of these people who will vote on this thing have, vo- have read it in totality. Zero, literally not one of them. This is what they do with everything. And by the way, They don't have to do this, right? They don't have to do this. We're going to show you in a video in a second. They're allowed to just fund the government for the rest of the year and figure it out, but they're doing it knowing Christmas is coming. People don't want to look like the Grinch. I'm such a good politician. I'm spending more of the people's money for the people. Look at me. Uh, We've got a little info here from the Center for Strategic and International Studies on what's going on with this money related to Ukraine. U.S. aid to Ukraine totals 68 billion and the White House has just asked Congress for another 37.7 billion. In the spring, the new Congress will consider aid in the context of the administration's proposed fiscal year 2024 budget. With these decisions ahead, it is worth reviewing how much aid there has been what the aid does, and what the administration is requesting. Such a review turns up some surprises and will help clarify discussions about future aid packages. You guys may remember that we had Rand Paul on when they passed the last version of Ukraine aid, and all Rand Paul was asking for were receipts, right? He wasn't thrilled with giving them more money. He's a libertarian. He's more of an isolationist, generally speaking. But he wasn't actually completely against anything, as far as I could tell. But all he said was, hey, we're going to give them a whole bunch of money. Could we see what they're doing? What are you guys doing with the the money? Are you buying sweatshirts? Are you buying weapons? Are you buying video games? Are you buying crack? Like, what the hell's going on here? Crack is likely because, you know, Hunter Biden. Anyway, listen to Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell. I I don't know how many times I've even mentioned Mitch McConnell in the years that we've been doing the direct message. I barely talk about this guy. He, He looms large over... Washington, obviously, he's, he's part of the swamp. He is, he is really, I mean, just watch this and tell me that this is how you feel. Making sure the Defense Department can deal <clears throat> with the major threats coming from Russia and China, providing assistance for the Ukrainians to defeat the Russians. That's the number one priority for the United States right now according to most Republicans. That's sort of how we see the challenges confronting uh, the country at the moment. Fighting assistance to make sure Ukraine can defeat the Russians is number one on Republicans' minds? I have to say, I'm I'm a newly uh, minted Republican. I registered as a Republican when we got down here to Florida. Giving more money to Ukraine is not in my top 20. Connor, top 20? Phoenix, top 20? Daphne, top 20? Daphne went like this, so we're going to say it's 19 on Daphne's, but that's still pretty low. Nobody wants to do this except you evil sucking swamp creatures. You're the only people who want to do this. It is not the top of anyone's mind. How about the economy? How about the border? How about free speech? We could go through a whole bunch of stuff here. He's just awful, but he's so proud. He's so proud. Proud they've been able to jam through another spending bill with money they don't have. That's how good he is at his job. So, admittedly, I'm pretty 
<laughs> proud of the fact that with a Democratic president, a Democratic House, and a Democratic Senate, we were able to achieve, through this omnibus spending bill, essentially all of our priorities. What priorities, and who do you mean by our? Our priorities? I don't think you mean the people's priorities, because I do not know anyone that thinks that funding Ukraine anymore to defeat Russia, whatever you think defeat means, and by the way, when you get pretty close to defeating the guy with nukes, he might do something crazy, which is kind of what I'm starting to think all you people want because you're losing control at such a rapid rate and so many people are waking up so fast that you're kind of like, ah, let's get a nuclear war going because that'll distract everybody. And I wouldn't put anything past these people. Uh, here's Chuck Schumer, and Mitch is very happy to work with Chuck. It's odd. They hate each other on everything. They're always fighting. But when it comes to spending all of our money and getting us more in debt and doing things that will do no good for anyone and helping a comedian actor in Ukraine hang out with Ben Stiller and David Letterman, then they agree and they really love each other. It's really fa fantastic. Here's Chuck Schumer being asked, well, could, is it possible that anyone even read this freaking thing? How is it in a, a functional process to drop a 4,100-page bill this morning, expect to vote on it tomorrow? Well, most of Congress has had a chance to review this. Look, the bill has been carefully worked on by the Appropriations Committee for a very, very long time. Uh, most of the provisions of the bill were well known weeks and weeks and weeks in advance. And uh, getting this bill done for the American people, which really matters, is the most important thing. Yes. God, everything he says is a lie. First off, this does nothing for the American people. This will make everything worse for the American people. He is not for the American people. Uh, McConnell is not for the American people. The, if I'm an American, you, you people have nothing to do with any of the things that I believe in. And man, the swamp has to be drained. Like They're making more of an argument for Trump than Trump can make for himself. That's really what's going on here. It's incredible what these people are doing. Uh, also, this idea that it was bounced around the Appropriations Committee so everyone knew what was in it. You know, it's funny, I, I am a, uh, I would say I'm a fairly uh, astute person when it comes to watching the news and I pay attention to these things. I'm on Twitter. I have the phone in my hand all the time. Uh, I never saw any of this stuff. Why didn't any of this stuff get leaked? Remember when Roe v. Wade decision, that thing got leaked. We never found out who leaked it. That's kind of weird. But everything gets leaked. Everything is leaked to the New York Times. But somehow all of the spending... That didn't get leaked until they released it at 2 a.m. That's what they do. And also a 2 a.m. Tuesday release. You know who else does that? When Google and Apple update your terms of service and they tell you subtly that you're gonna lose some rights or some free speech or some ability to do something or they're gonna do something shady or they're gonna track you. You know what time they do it? 2 a.m. on Tuesdays. That's pretty much how this thing works. Anyway, here's Joe Manchin, who people think of as a somewhat sane guy and occasionally is, despite being a Democrat. Uh, here he is going after Kevin McCarthy because Kevin McCarthy's actually trying to stand his ground on this thing and say, hey guys, let's fund the government for the rest of the year, but let's not sign off on this crazy bill. So credit where it's due. McCarthy's trying to do the right thing. Manchin, who Republicans usually think is pretty decent. Uh, well, take a look. I don't know if you saw, but Kevin McCarthy, who is really trying to get the votes to become speaker, he said that if any Republicans in the Senate vote for this omnibus spending bill, $1.7 trillion, then their legislative priorities will not be heard in the House when he is speaker. Uh, Mitt Romney called that uh, silliness. W what do you think of it? I think Mitt described it pretty well. <laughs> yeah, pretty well. I mean, this is not a vindictive type of thing that we're not, in we're not in high school or college and playing games back and forth. This is real life. Yeah, it's real life. So actually McCarthy is doing the right thing. He's saying, let's not do this just because it's Christmas and we want to go on vacation. Let's fund the government for the rest of the year and then figure it out when we Republicans have more power, literally in about two weeks from now, okay? Just on the other side of the new year. That's when this all will change. Uh, but instead, uh, you've got, well, Mitt Romney doesn't like him. And then, of course, Joe Manchin likes Mitt Romney. It's like Mitt Romney's nothing. Mitt Romney's a Democrat. Like, don't you see it? These people, and also, these aren't, these, we can't play these games. Of course, McCarthy's doing the right thing. You should punish your guys who behave like, basically like drunken sailors, like a bunch of drunken Democrats. You should punish them. If you guys vote for this, you're basically wrecking a, a somewhat, let's say sane Republican agenda and McCarthy should punish you. He absolutely should. I'm with you, McCarthy, on that for sure. Uh, all right, so some Republicans are actually speaking up uh, and I've sort of been laying it out for you, but here's Kevin McCarthy on what he would do right now. 
Voters have voted to change. The Republicans would be in power in 15 days. So why wouldn't we simply do a continuing resolution, fund the government into the next year, and then we'd have an opportunity to actually cut spending? They are going to increase. They're going to increase by more than $100 billion after all the increases they've done for. So now the baseline when we take over is going to be $100 billion more, adding more to inflation. These two senators, Leahy and Shelby, won't have to face the voters because they're leaving. They won't even tell us what the numbers are, and they're going to show a bill that are thousands of pages that nobody can read. And then what the Democrats did was to pass the continuing resolution right up to Christmas and pressure us to pass this bill, which is wrong. We should hold off and let Republicans help us secure the border in, in funding this government. The Republicans are about to have some power, as he said, in 15 days. The Republicans are about to be able to do some things. And all of these sellouts, Mitt Romney and all the rest of them, they are going to sign this thing. The, the, the thing's going to pass. Like, it's just, it is what it is. It's entropy. The government constantly works with entropy. It just moves and moves and moves and moves. And a bunch of us try to fight it and you can get little wins here and there. But the thing just moves, right? But McCarthy's absolutely right. Get us to the end of the year. We'll take over. And then... We could do this. We could rip the freaking thing up and we could figure out other ways to fund things instead of just endlessly spending and funding the war and funding these agencies that have worked against us, the American people and everything else. But, you know, there are one or two sane people in government. I usually put Rand Paul at the top of my list and uh, yeah, Rand Paul's not happy about it. I brought with me the Omni, 4,155 pages. When was it produced? In the dead of the night, 1.30 in the morning when it was released. Now, people argue that it's conservatives' fault. It's, you don't have the Christmas spirit. Somehow you're holding up government. Well, whose job is it to produce this? The people in charge of spending. The people in charge of both of the parties. When did they know that this would be necessary? Well, it's in the law, September 30th. You got nine months, almost 10 months, to produce a plan, to have a spending plan. They weren't ready on September 30th, so they voted themselves 90 more days. They weren't ready last week either, so they voted themselves another week. And now we have it at 1.30 in the morning this morning. But what's the clamor? The clamor is to vote. Vote now. Let's get it done. Why are you standing in the way of spending? Well, the real question is this, what is more dangerous? What is more dangerous to the country? $1.1 trillion in new debt, or as Republican leadership likes to say, oh, but it's a win, it's a big win, we're getting $45 billion for the military. So which is more important? Which threatens the country more? Are we at risk for being invaded by a foreign power if we don't put $45 billion into the military? Or are we more at risk by adding to a $31 trillion debt? I think the greatest risk to our national security is our debt. The process stinks. It's an abomination. It's a no good, rotten way to run your government. You know, what's interesting is that Mitch McConnell, as you know, is from Kentucky. Rand Paul, as you know, is from Kentucky. I have a feeling these guys don't have dinner that often. Um, yeah, everything that Rand Paul said there is true. The way they frame everything, the time they have to do it, and then they try to jam it through and nobody's read it and they send it to you late and all of that stuff. You know, I, I obviously, I like Rand Paul a lot and I, I saw him in DC a couple weeks ago and we interviewed him again. Um, it's interesting because, and I've sort of tried to say this to him sometimes, it's like, he's kind of like the sane guy who accidentally got thrown into the mental institution, right? So everyone in DC, Republicans who they're all just awful. Everyone does all the wrong things. Like they just don't care. Nobody, you, nobody is willing to take the slings and arrows. And I'm talking at the federal level, because obviously I'm not talking about the state level where there are good things working Florida, Florida. Um, but he's the guy who they accidentally admitted to the mental institution. And he's trying to tell everybody, guys, guys, I'm not supposed to be here. There, there's ways better we can do this thing. We don't have to drug everybody. We should try some other therapies. And there's, you know, okay. And I know this guy's talking to himself and this guy's whatever. And, but, and, and he just, but he, he's a glutton for punishment. But he's, he's basically like one man standing there as the tide gets higher and higher going, guys, we're, we're all going to drown soon. Does anyone, anyone want to get some flip flops or what do they call those things? Little, little things that go on the kids' arms. Not little floaties, thank you. 
Uh, here, here's a picture that Rand Paul tweeted out. That's the size of the bill, 4,155 pages. Nobody has read that freaking thing. All right, so what does this all, what does this all get us to? So look, Zelensky's gonna come. He's gonna walk out with a ton of cash. The war in Ukraine will continue. The government will be funded. We're gonna give all of this money to just like crazy things. It's like 70 million to, to study salmon here. It's like all of the crazy, crazy things. Like think of something crazy, we're probably funding it. You know, and, and he makes a good point. It's like, okay, so like personally, I'm for a strong military. I am for a strong military so that you don't have to use it, right? The idea is that you have some level of deterrence. So I'm not against funding the military. But he's right, it's not as if we're gonna be invaded next week. So why don't you, unless you guys know something, I don't know. But it's like, why don't you just wait, guys? Just show some freaking balls. You just got the house back. Can you show some balls? Or do they have your balls? How did they get your balls? And where are they keeping your balls? But you wanna talk about a guy with balls? There's a guy with balls. He's right here in Florida. His name's Ron DeSantis. He's the governor. Have you heard about him? Uh, he's running the state incredibly well, fiscally well, uh, legally well, philosophically well, uh, with the right ideas, the right set of values, all of those things. Uh, and he gave a talk yesterday, you know, because we're still in the midst of this, this cleanup from this unbelievably, basically category five hurricane uh, that hit Southwest Florida. So we're in the midst of this cleanup. FEMA pulled out money, Florida made up for it. We've, re we've rebuilt roads, we've rebuilt houses, communities faster than anyone could have possibly imagined. Uh, and the governor was asked about his sort of philosophy around how you do good things and, and really that it's not just about one man. And we've been able to, I think, attract um, a lot of really, really good people. And people who, when you're in these positions, you know, these are folks that are really dedicated to the cause. And, um, and it's important because, you know, you can have great policy, you can have a great vision, but you gotta have people there that believe in it and are gonna implement it and not try to undermine it or undercut it. And so we've had great buy-in and we've had a lot of people that have really put the mission first. And I think that's part of the reason, you know, we've been so successful. I mean, I can sit here and do the press conferences and I'll get more cameras than some of the other people who work in state government, but you know, if I had to build the bridge by myself without having people who were willing to get in there and, and, and heed our directives and really work hard to implement our vision, you know, it wouldn't have happened as quickly as that. So all that's very, very important. And I think we've created a very positive culture uh, of a can-do spirit. And isn't that something like in stark contrast to McConnell? McConnell, just the tone with which he talks one priority for Republicans in America is keeping Ukraine safe against Russia. And it's like, actually, you know, there's an awful lot of Republicans down in South Florida, for example, who uh, want their bridges rebuilt, want their communities back up and running, want to get their stores going and electricity and everything else. And what's really good about what DeSantis is doing there, he's saying, I'm going to get the cameras no matter what. I can't do this. I can give speeches. I can respond to reporters. Uh, but we need good people there. And what's also interesting, a little subtext to that, he said, we will attract good people. And it's not that you just have to believe in the vision, you have to implement it. And it's like, it's actually happening because people are moving here. Good people are moving here and bringing skills and bringing their families and their values. And it's happening here. So it's working at a certain state level. But the federal thing, man, it is freaking effed up. And Zelensky is just gonna walk out of here with cash. And remember, FEMA cut the aid to Florida, right? They cut the aid to Florida. It was, I think, $25 million. It's not much. Florida made it up. But we're going to give this guy a couple more billion. It's what, 37 more billion after the 68 we've given him already. And it's like, are we winning the war? Is this doing anything for American interests? Putin's not a good dude. Then it's not good to invade your neighbors. And every country has a right to defend itself. But what in the high hell are we doing here? And if the Republicans have not learned at this point that people want them to stand up against this, this is the thing that people want them to stand up for, that as I said earlier, they're doing Trump's job for them because the average person's gonna go, wait a minute, we can either have these McConnell types and fund crazy wars and spend all this money we don't have, or Trump. And he doesn't, he's not even on Twitter anymore, so we don't have to worry about the mean tweets. That, that's the situation that they're laying out there. Guys, stick around for a cold close. Couple comments from the Rubin Report. .locals.com community. Elizabeth says, why can we pump as much money as possible into Ukraine to defend democracy, 
but the same people can't, the same people get mad when we help Israel. This is, this is endless. I, you know, it's so interesting because to me, I would, if you were asking me, what would you do, right? So I've been complaining about what these people do. How about we just cut the entire federal budget? And I mean, across the board, I mean, federal foreign spending, defense spending, cut departments, get rid of the department. I would, department of education, department of everything, transportation, cut everything by 25%. How about we do that? And we say, we're gonna cut everything by 25% for six months and see what happens. Right? How about that? Could we do that and see what happens? And guess what? Everything would be just fine. And as a matter of fact, I suspect things would be a lot better. But they can't do that because they're on the gravy train and they can't do it. And uh, that, that's the problem. Uh, Martin King says, I'd be quite happy if the government were to shut down. There are certain critical functions that never shut down. So what's the problem? Right. That is also a funny point. You know, the, first off, the idea that the government would shut down. All right, go ahead, federal government, shut down. I'll be all right. We could go bowling later or something, you know? We haven't been bowling in a while. That would be fun. Shut down. We don't need you. In a weird way, that's why they very rarely shut down. When, when was the last government shut down? Can you check on that? I remember one maybe in the, was it 2019? So we did do a, like a temporary one for a couple of days. It's like, let the government shut down. Okay. The reason that they don't want the government to shut down is because after three days, you might be like, what do we need those guys for? You know? So they have to keep funding the nonsense so that we think that we need it. Uh, guys, if you have not subscribed, uh, please do at rumble.com slash Ruben Report and join us uh, if you want to live chat during the show and much more at rubenreport.locals.com. Uh, by the way, uh, Friday will be our last show of the year. We've got a couple of year-end shows and best ofs and everything else coming out Christmas, but we're not, you know, Christmas week, but we're not going to bludgeon you with a ton of stuff. We'll have a bunch of announcements on Friday. Oh, and uh, we are going to announce, one of the announcements on Friday will be that, yes, we are moving, we're helping somebody move from Cali likely to Florida, that's the idea. We've, we've got a whole bunch of people uh, that have resubmitted their stories on Locals and we are gonna pick somebody and we're gonna throw in some cash and I'll, I'll see what I can do. Pay for a moving truck, this, that, the other thing. We'll, we'll figure it out. Um, so stay tuned for that on Friday. We leave you, we didn't say his name once during the show today, with the elderly man pretending to be president. Look, uh, and I wanna thank uh, a good friend of mine, Michigan governor. Gretchen Whitmer, you've got a backbone like a ramrod. You know, and of course, I know you've had an incredible role model in Marikisha Lance Bottoms. She's got a backbone like a ramrod. The vice president of the United States, yeah. Vice President Harris. How's she doing? You're almost two years in. How's she doing? She's doing great. She has a backbone like a ramrod. But the truth is, <laughs> she's the strongest person I know. She's a backbone like a ramrod. I see the world from where I grew up like many of you. I grew up in Scranton, as I said. My mom taught me. My mom had a backbone like a ramrod.